Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday. It's March 10th. Uh, there's not going to be a chart lesson today. Uh, I'm going to do something, but it's not going to be based on any of our trades. Uh, I didn't trade today. Um, there was an issue with NinjaTrader and the historical data, and I never could get a good enough chart. I, I didn't realize what was going on until it was too late, but I kept, you know, trying to reload my chart. And the data that was coming in, they said, was fine, but every time you reloaded your chart, you lost anything previous to that, and you had to wait for it to start over again. And um, I just didn't have enough price action to trade from that I felt comfortable trading, so I didn't trade at all today. Uh, and I know it, uh, the way I understand it, it's a ninja trader issue. It wasn't your broker or if you're, you know, uh, doesn't matter which broker you're using, you probably had the same issue. So, But needless to say, no trading today so I'm not even I don't even have a decent chart to to show you what the trades were so I'm not going to try but what I'm going to do instead uh, a, a, a nice couple sent me this chart right here and their question is about congestion areas and they're calling these circled areas congestion areas so um, let's try to see if we can make it a little bit bigger I don't know how clear it'll be but first of all, um, these are not congestion areas. The, this one is what I would call a trading range. And this, these other two look a little rangy. But this is a correction making higher highs and higher lows. So I wouldn't even call that a range. They're trying to box a range into it. But you see it doesn't fit very well. And then they try to do the same thing here. So I think they're a little bit... Uh, I think they're a little bit confused about what I consider congestion and uh, versus a trading range. What I consider congestion is just a, a very tiny trading range like this that consists of five or six, seven bars. Once you go past that, you've got a trading range. And uh, this is congestion. Notice how there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's about seven bars stacked up there. They're all tight up and down they're all within one another they're not really the, the markets not trending there but that's not big enough to be a trading range and there's no set or clear rule as to what's congestion or what's a trading range uh, but until you start to get multiple bars stacking up it, it's you know I, that I just call congestion uh, you could just call it a tiny trading range whatever but don't get confused between what's considered congestion and what's not, because I think that's what's happened here. Uh, this is definitely a trading range, no doubt about it. Uh, we broke out the top and failed. We broke out the bottom and failed. I would have, I actually think the high is really right along here. Uh, maybe you, you might even call it up here, but you get the most touches right across these lines right in here uh, while getting the closes. And if we just go over to my chart, let's go over to my chart. Uh, here's the same three areas in that circle and you can see how much different that looks on my chart the way I've got my lines drawn versus the way they do and once we started down here I would have been looking for at least a measured leg or an attempt to make a measured leg and you see we went a little bit further than that um, you know you're looking for a measured leg would have put you right down here even with this so that was a good location to be looking for so once you start going lower again then you're looking for a lot you know um, you know you're looking for this measured move and until you get there if you're still working down that's what you're looking for as a target and if you keep going lower you got to be careful when you start keep trading much lower than this because this is what happens people know that the market's overdone it reverses that's a perfect reversal pattern and look it traded up for a long time and then look at that how that looks on my chart you can see that that's holding the price action neatly where uh, well, you can't see that part of their chart. They're they're more interested in this part, and I get that. Um, but look how much different their chart looks, again, than my chart. And, you know, once you can see and understand what's going on, it all makes much more sense. You can see that's a downtrend right there. We trade it up into a little trading range. Generally, you know, the rules say we're going to break out and go higher, but we didn't. We turned down for whatever reason. We, this became... Uh, very strong resistance. Let me get this circle out of the way and we'll put the lines on there. I, I think they had the lower lines pretty close. I would have called it probably that. I probably would have called it that for the closes 
where it gets the most closes. Um, and then on the upper side, I would have called it that because see how that's holding most of the touches and all of the, and the closes within it. And so basically what happened was we failed to the outside, to the bottom, trapped everybody. This is, this is what, it, you know, typically what happens on a trading range. Prices break out and they fail. That's why we don't trade them. The only way to trade them is to wait on a breakout pullback short, which come right here, comes right here. And then it breaks out the top, it fails. You could have just shorted that. Uh, you might have thought about going long here, but the bar is so big, you can't really. This was, this might have been news driven, I can't remember. But look at this. This is a nice second entry short uh, with a little double top trap here. You got a new, you got a low right here. It's a new low because it's lower than that swing low. First entry, pull back. There's a second entry, but it's kind of congested there. That's two or three little bars in a row. One of them's. So just wait, and when it broke higher here and then turned down, that's a perfect place to go short. But even if you'd have gone short right there and you put your stop where it belongs, you're still good to go. And that's the kind of breakout pullback you're looking for, one that, you know, gives you a trap to the upside and maybe a second entry to the downside. Um, and then you're at least looking for a measured leg like that one probably once it starts headed lower. And I think we got even more than that. Uh, for whatever reason, the market got weak in here and everything overshot. It didn't overshoot by much, just enough to trap people. And then, look, it went higher. Because that's what happens. This is what starts attracting the weak traders. This stuff right here, they start seeing it. So, oh, i got to get short. i got to get short. i got to get short. And then they'll make it look like it's going lower on that big bearish bar, and they trap them there. And the market's way overdone. It's time to go back to the upside. Look, I found this channel... By drawing this off these lows, there's a reason prices are bouncing every time they get down here because you couldn't really find this off the high. But if you drag this up, you see that's an exact match. And really, I, what I was doing at the time was I was dragging it up to this high right here and thinking I was going to play that line. But when it went on through, you got to go to a measured move to the other side. And you can see that turns out that's just a median line down through there, and we bounced off of it several times and tried to go lower and trapped everybody and then went higher. So this is a trading range and that's the exact rules of a trading range. So you got to be able to recognize this stuff. Um, and I don't see this as a trading range at all. Um, at the most, it looks like there's probably a little channel working up through here. And prices are just going back and forth like usual. And you can see that. And, you know, we get a, we really get a break, a close outside it right down here. You might have even made it a little flatter. Uh, let's see if we can make it fit a little bit better. That, that might fit a little better. It fits about the same, really. You still, get, you still miss here, and that's telling you something. Uh, but you got the bigger channel, and that's the first break. So we're not looking for, you're not looking for longs. All you're looking for is shorts at this point. And so there's no reason to get tripped up in this stuff. You're only looking to go short, and you don't go short at these lows. you got to wait on the setup at the next logical point, which is either going to be the EMA or up here at the trend line. And, you, you know, you don't really get a very good setup on my chart here. Somebody else might have, and if you did, you might have got trapped there. Um uh, but you can see that there are some matching highs right here. And the clue that you might break and go a little higher is the fact that you're making a lower high each time all the way up here. And so that's a sign that, hey, we may break out the top, but you know what usually happens when you break out, especially when you got a downtrend working here. Um, and they're measuring, you know, you couldn't start your measured move yet till you got right there, till you know you're going lower again uh, and you're going to spec that somewhere over here along this trend line or on a break of it and so you're still now that you got the break once you get a couple of legs down and you may once you get one leg like this one that's that bearish you're probably going to get a second one and it's probably going to be not as quick and usually if you get one that's kind of choppy down and you get a second one it might move real quick they never move it's tricky like that. Once you see one fast move, the next one, even though even if it's going to be a measured move, usually will not be as pretty because too many people are looking at it and they're trying to fool people. 
Um, so keep that in mind. Remember that. But there's no, I don't really see any trading range here. Uh, there's a couple little congestion areas, but they're, you know, they're following the trend. And that's why they're, that's why you're getting congestion here, because there's a little trend line working up. Uh, you know, it's finding support there, to, and it's, people are trying to take it lower, but they're wrong, and they're on the wrong side, and it just keeps working higher until it reaches exhaustion, then it's time to go down again. And this was the other area, and I don't see much there at all. I do see the little congestion area right here, and you can't go short way down here. You had that, look at that move down, and you're so far below the EMA, you can't go short in that congestion. You got to wait on a pullback, which comes here, and that's the first opportunity to go short right there, and it would have worked. And you get another chance right here. There's a failed. It's not really a failed second entry long. Notice there's a leg down. You try to correct, and it comes down, and then it breaks higher again. It's like two legs. So on a smaller level, I guarantee you, you got another break here, and it's a failed second entry long, and then boom. And then if you're either looking for this original measured leg. Or you're looking for one like this, and I, but I bet you they probably end up at the same place. They do, right in there. And we went a little lower than that. So um, you can't be looking for longs. Now, once you make a new low, if you get a setup in here, you can look for longs. And notice, there's no rejection of prices till right here. So a smart trader might go long right there. Uh, you're better off to wait on a second entry uh, or a better setup than that, which would have come right here. And still it took uh, a little bit of chopping around before it went higher. And I think this is where I demonstrate. I think this is where I got a loss that day because I, I went long right there. I think I actually had a loss right there and uh, had to make my money back on these next two entries up through here. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, and if there were others that are, First of all, you got to understand what the chart is doing. You got to know the general direction. You got to be able to find that with, and you do that by drawing your channels and stuff. And if you go back over here, you can see they don't, they're not recognizing right here that we've started a downtrend and they're looking at this more like little ranges or something. And there's nothing wrong with looking at it like that, but you got to look at it. You got to get it right. And I would say, you know, you don't see any matching lows here that are consistent except along a trend line like this. And when you drag it to the top, go back to my chart, you can see those consistent lines. And on the top there, you know, maybe it's even right here. And we overshot it a couple of times. Uh, that looks that looks more realistic to me there. I think that's probably it. And we just overshot it a couple of times. And that's telling you a good chance to get short um, if you're in the right location by coming off this upper line and those overshoots. And, uh, you know, they tried to pull it back here and retest this, but they couldn't. The market's too weak and it goes lower. But, you know, you can't be taking long. You could go long in here based off this short-term trend, and but we never got a new low. But I, don't, I really think you're living on the edge going long. There's no just wait for the short that's sure to come or wait until you get a, you know, a really good trend going in the other direction. And even down here, the best bet to wait to go long is when you get a confirmed trend line in the other way, which came off those first two little swings right there. And then you knew you were going the other direction. But till then, you don't know what's going on. So um, it's all about how you look at everything in context. You you know, what, what happens sometimes is our... People get hung up. Uh, I got another email from um, a lady trader, and she was getting hung up looking at, um, she was she got so busy looking for failed second entries that she wasn't seeing the easy setups on the second entries. And she said once she recognized that, and, and this here's another important point. She said the reason I finally recognized it, was I started studying my chart like you said every night. And she said, it's amazing what I pick up each night. And she said, I never realized what I was doing until I started studying my chart more closely. And when I did, I realized I'm spending all this time looking for failed second entries. If I would just get with a trend and look for the second entries, she said, suddenly I'm doing so much better. 
And so you got to, you know, don't get so hung up on in the weeds looking for failed second entries and congestion. And, you know, once you see the congestion, just recognize it. And the best bet is stay out, you know, until you understand how to trade out of congestion, just ignore it. That's a bad trade for you. I mean, what congestion is usually telling you is that you're, you're running, your move is running out of steam and you're finding if it's a move down like this, what happens, you're running out of steam and it's just taking a minute to build for a little correction. And, you know, there's just not enough people willing to sell down here. So the buyers take over for a few minutes and you get a correction and then, all the smart traders realize, okay, I feel comfortable now taking another trade uh, to the short side because we backed up some and they're willing to go short again. And uh, same thing coming up. Notice where the congestion, or the, in this case, a trading range formed up here at these highs. The market could, you know, they're, we're running out of buyers at this level. People aren't willing to buy, so it just kind of, but yet the sellers hadn't really taken over yet. So it's like where they're switching places, so to speak. It's a it's the indecision. Same thing here. We moved down and there weren't enough sellers yet willing to get short and but nobody's willing to buy and finally the buyers give up and boom it takes off again and all the sellers jump in and drive it on down. So hopefully that makes sense to you about the congestion. Understand what it is. Now this is a trading range right here. Let's move our lines down here. I would say the lows are, at first they were here and then they kind of moved up. I would have probably moved them all the way to there. And on the upside, I would say they're probably right there. And what happened was you got a little failed break out the low side. You got a failed break out the side, low side. We came back, we tried, we had like a double failure there to go below that previous double bottom and you know what that always means and remember me talking about this go back and watch the video if you don't if I'd have been smart and just been patient and waited for here you could have made it all your money back off that loser I had I still made it back but I had to fight out some stuff here I made a couple of mistakes and if I'd have just waited on the proper setup which always comes but it's but once you start making mental errors you start getting impatient and you keep thinking you're gonna miss something and I mean, because that looks pretty good right there, but that's the first entry. There's a new high, pullback, got a nice, you know, rejection, bullish bar, but oh, that's the first entry. Then it backs up, and half the people tighten up their stop, and they get stopped out, and it turns, and guess it goes right where they thought it was going to go to begin with. And that's what I was expecting that day to happen, and I should have scapped out right here on both my trades, but I was trying to make a little extra to get over to my $200, and I felt like we were going to get at least a measured move like this right here. That was my what kept me in this trade. And uh, you got to recognize, you know, I was able to read this and recognize what was probably going to happen. And you get a measured move. And so I exited right in here somewhere. And actually, actually, it seemed like I exited a little earlier than that because that got me well over my time. I can't remember where I exited. But anyway, um, if you just waited on that target, look at it, to, on the tick, to the tick. And, you know, this stuff happens every day. You, it's not, it takes a while to learn this and pick it up, but you got to be able to recognize at least a trend. If the market's making lower lows and lower highs, it's trending down. Look at the EMA. It, by, you know, it probably didn't start turning down till right here. Uh, but by that time, you can recognize we're starting to go lower. And then you get a correction. Like I said, you're overdone here. You get a correction back to the other side. It overshoots it a little bit, and, but then the trend starts back again. And, you know, right here we're making higher highs and higher lows all the way up here. That means we're going up for now. And, you know, a real aggressive trader is going to trade that to the long side. But you know my rules say until you get a break of this trend line and a new low, stay with the trend. Just sit tight and wait because there's going to be some good trades coming and look what came. Plenty of good entries there. and uh, But you've got to be able to recognize the trend. And it's obvious here, uh, once we got past here, we're making pretty much higher highs and higher lows. We got a little trap here, and that was another thing I really liked, when it breaks lower like that and then go. That's All they're doing is running the stops of people that are tightening their stops, trying to be smart, trying to be safe. And all they do is get stopped off right stopped out right before the market takes off. 
So um, I hope that's helpful to the couple that sent me this chart. Uh, I hope it's also helpful to some of the rest of you. Um, I mean, these are the kind of lessons we've been putting um, in our new premium section, just for those that are curious. Um, and I'm trying to do more of them. Uh, we, you know, we do these videos and we go into this stuff in more depth. So something to think about. But anyway, I hope that's helpful to you. I hope, it's, I hope everybody learned something today. Hopefully they get the charts worked out before tomorrow and we can all make some money tomorrow. But I'm going to wrap it up. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com and we'll see you next time.